Hello, welcome to module 6 of the course on application of spectroscopic methods in molecular structural determination. In this lecture, we will continue with NMR spectroscopy and have a look at the second order effects in the NMR spectra. Now, the earlier examples we saw in the previous lectures, the NMR spectra were all simple spectra in the sense they were all first order spectra and the information about delta value and J value could be directly read from the spectrum itself. It's not always the case that the extraction of delta value and J value in a straightforward manner from the spectrum is possible, especially when a complex second order spectrum is presented. Now let us consider what constitutes a second order spectrum. Consider two spins HA and HB. If the chemical shift values of these two spins are very close together, such that the difference in the chemical shift values are comparable to the J value, one finds second order effects in the NMR spectrum. Typically, when the ratio of delta delta, in other words, the difference in the spectrum, difference in the chemical shift value of A and B to the ratio of J is less than 10, second order effects are seen in the spectrum. Now, the second order effect is seen as unusual intensities of the multiplet, more than the expected number of lines in the multiplet, and so on. The number of lines and the frequencies and the intensities can actually be theoretically calculated for any complex NMR spectrum. These are the characteristic features of the second order spectrum, namely the unusual intensities of multiplets and more than the expected number of lines of multiplets in the spectrum. Some examples of spin system that show second order effects are shown in this particular slide. If we consider aromatic ring, the hydrogens are close in terms of their chemical shift values and normally they are comparable to their J values. So a hydrogen A, hydrogen B of this type which is ortho coupled can actually present a second order spectrum which would be an AB spectrum. Consider this example where the two hydrogens are diastereotopic in nature. They may not be very different in their chemical nature. So their difference in the chemical shift values can be very small and comparable to the J value and that can present an HAB kind of a system, uh, NMR AB kind of a pattern can be seen in the NMR spectrum. Volufenic systems of this type present a very complex NMR spectrum. They can be ABC type or AMX type depending on the differences in the chemical shift values of the various hydrogen which are mutually coupled to each other. Now examples of para disubstituted benzene derivative is presented here that constitutes an AA prime, BB prime type of a fairly complex spin system. So is this particular disubstituted ethane derivative for example. Depending on the X and Y substituent, the HA and the HB can be very close together in their chemical shift value and that can present a fairly complex NMR spectrum. Typically alkyl chains are second order in, al the spectrum of alkyl chains are second order in nature and they are fairly complex to interpret. The number of spin system, the chemical shift value and the J value that can be extracted is given in this slide. Now let us consider a two spin system, namely the AB system. In the AB system, there are two spins and hence four lines are expected, but the line spacing and the intensities depend on the ratio of delta delta to J and the multiplet consists of two chemical shift value, namely delta A and delta B, and one coupling constant between A and B, namely J, A, B. Now consider the spectrum of this particular nitro amino derivative of paraxylene. Now the two aromatic hydrogen are presented here as HA and HB, and they constitute a two spin system, and they appear in this particular pattern. Now if you look at this pattern carefully, HA should couple with HB and split it into a doublet. Similarly, HB should couple with HA and split this into a doublet. So one should see two doublets and the doublets usually should have equal intensities in terms of the two lines of the doublet. But that's not the case in this particular system. You can see some kind of a roof effect in terms of the intensity of the inner lines to be higher than the intensity of the outer line. This is a very characteristic feature of the second order effect. Now for comparison sake, a true first order quartet is shown here and this would correspond to something like a CH2 group of a ethyl group where you have a CH2-CH3 group where CH2 is typically attached to a heteroatom 
like a, an oxygen or nitrogen for example. Under such circumstances, the CH3 splits the CH2 into a quartet and the difference between this quartet and this quartet is evident from the picture itself. In this quartet, what you see, the AB quartet, the intensities are different. The intensities are supposed to be 1 is to 1 for this doublet and 1 is to 1 for this doublet. Such is not the case in this particular picture. And secondly, what is more important is the gap between line 2 and 3 is fairly large compared to the gap between 1 and 2 or 3 and 4. In the case of a simple first order spectrum, the intensities are predictable. It should be 1 to 3 to 3 to 1 and the gap between any adjacent line would be identical and that represents the J value of the CH2 CH3 coupling in this particular case. So one should not confuse between the second order AB quartet and a simple first order quartet. <coughs> the differences are highlighted in this particular table. In the case of first order quartet which is the figure that is shown in the bottom here all the four lines are equally spaced and the spacing between any adjacent line is the J value. Whereas in the case of AB quartet, spacing between line 2 and 3 will vary considerably. It will depend upon the delta delta divided by J ratio. Spacing between 1 and 2 or 3 and 4 is the J value. Spacing between 2 and 3 is not a J value and that is very important to recognize. Now the intensity ratios of a first order quartet will always be 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 whereas the intensity ratio of a AB quartet will vary very widely depending upon the delta delta divided by J ratio. In the case of a first order quartet, it contains only one delta value and one J value, whereas an AB quartet actually contains two delta values and one J value which corresponds to JAB. The spectral pattern is symmetrical with respect to the center of the multiplet. What I mean is, if you consider the central point of this AB quartet or the simple quartet, on either side of the spectrum with reference to the center point it is symmetrical and that is what is meant by spectral pattern is symmetrical with respect to the center of the multiplet. This is true for both AB pattern as well as the first order pattern. The pattern does not depend on the spectrometer frequency in the case of the first order spectrum. That is extremely important. Whether you measure it in a 200 megahertz spectrometer or a 600 megahertz spectrometer the line spacing, the intensity and the spectral pattern will look essentially same if it is a first order quartet. On the other hand, AB quartet will depend upon the spectrometer frequency. A multiplet that looks like an AB quartet can actually become an AM or an AX type of a system depending on the spectrometer because the delta delta which is expressed in hertz depends on the spectrometer frequency. In other words, the difference in the chemical shift value in expressed in hertz for example between two hydrogen would be dependent on the spectrometer frequency. So these are some important differences which are brought out to highlight the difference between the first order quartet and an AB quartet. This is a true second order quartet or AB quartet. You can see it very clearly because of the roof, roof effect. The intensity is not 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 and also spacing between adjacent lines are also not equal in this particular case. Now here is an example of a first order quartet as well as an AB quartet appearing in a spectrum. You consider this dibromoester. The CH2 group in the ester functional group is a true first order and that has the intensity ratio of 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 which is represented by this arrow showing the first order quartet here. And between the adjacent lines if you measure the coupling constant it would correspond to 7 hertz irrespective of which two adjacent lines you take and measure, it will always be 7 hertz. On the other hand, if you consider the benzylic hydrogen which is labeled as A and the adjacent hydrogen which is labeled as B, that constitutes a truly a second order spectrum. A AB quartet is what is seen at 4.8 ppm and 5.3 ppm and the expansion of this AB quartet is what is shown in the insert here. And with a coupling constant of about 12 hertz, this is truly a second order spectrum of AB quartet is what is shown here. Let us see some more examples of AB quartet and familiarize ourselves with the pattern, pattern kind of a thing that we recognize in each one of the spectrum. Pattern recognition is extremely important. That makes life easy for the interpretation of the spectral data. Once again, I should emphasize that in this spectrum, what is important is from the midpoint of the spectrum which is somewhere here, on either side of the spectrum, the spectrum looks symmetrical. This is extremely important to recognize. 
Now, the variation of delta delta with respect to the j value is what is represented here. In the first example, the top example, the difference in the chemical shift value is equal to the j value. In the second example, the difference in the chemical shift value is about four times the j value. In the last example, which is almost close to a first order kind of a system, the difference in the chemical shift value is 16 times the j value. When the difference in the chemical shift value to the J ratio is more than 10, normally you see a first order spectrum. You can s actually see a first order kind of a spectrum, a doublet of equal intensity and another doublet of equal intensity for an AX system. So this would correspond to an AB. This would correspond to also an AB system. The last one corresponds to an AX system. AX because A and X are very different in their chemical shift values. That is why two alphabets of farther apart is given in the labeling of the two spin systems here. Again, once again, some examples of the AB kind of a system, you can have diastereotopic methylene hydrogen or you can have geminal olefinic hydrogen, for example. You can have two hydrogens on an aliphatic chain adjacent to an on adjacent carbons, for example. You can have two cis hydrogens or two trans hydrogen, ortho hydrogen or meta hydrogen which are all mutually coupled to each other represent an AB type of a system. Now, how does one calculate the delta value and J value from an AB spectrum? Consider this to be an AB spectrum. One sees four frequencies, frequency 1, frequency 2, frequency 3 and frequency 4 labeled as mu1, mu2, mu3 and mu4. Now, the difference between mu1 and mu2 is the JAB or between mu3 and mu4 is the JAB. So the J value can be easily measured from a AB spectrum by measuring the difference in the frequency between 1 and 2 or two and 3 and 4. Now there is a simple expression which relates the difference in the chemical shift value. That is if this is a delta A and this is a delta B value, the difference in the chemical shift value is represented by delta delta. That is simply given by the expression of square root of mu4 minus mu1 multiplied by mu3 minus mu3, mu2. So from this one can actually calculate the difference in the chemical shift value. When the intensities of the central lines are much taller than the intensities of the line 1 and line 4, it is not the center of the doublet which is the chemical shift value. It is the center of gravity of the doublet which makes the chemical shift value. So the chemical shift value actually will be not at the center of this doublet. It will be closer to the taller line in either of the side of the NMR spectrum. <coughs> now, once you know the difference between the chemical shift value, this gap that is delta delta, once you calculate from this expression, you can also calculate the center of the spectrum by taking the average of the frequency 3 and frequency 4. So frequency 2 plus frequency 3 divided by 2 would be the center of the spectrum. So one can also figure out the center of the spectrum fairly easily from the spectrum because the spectrum is symmetrical with respect to the center. Now simply delta A would then be center of the spectrum frequency minus delta delta divided by 2 and the chemical shift value of B would be simply corresponding to the center of the spectrum frequency plus delta delta divided by 2. The J A B we have already discussed as the difference between line 4 and 3 or the difference between line 2 and 1. Here is an illustrative example where four different frequencies of an AB quartet are given as 10 hertz, 20.5 hertz, 28 hertz and 38.5 hertz. The difference in the chemical shift value is calculated using the simple expression which corresponds to 18 hertz in this particular case. The center of the spectrum is essentially the average between line 2 and line 3 which is also given as 24.25. All of them are expressed in hertz only. Therefore, the delta A would be C minus delta delta divided by 2 which would be equal to 24.25 minus 9 which is 15.25 hertz. The delta delta the delta B would be corresponding to C plus delta delta divided by 2 which would be 24.25 plus 9 which is 33.25 hertz. So delta A and delta B are extracted from this information in terms of hertz. Now if you divide it by the spectrometer frequency one obtains the corresponding values in parts per million. JAB of course is here 10.5 hertz which is just the difference between line 1 and line 2 or line 3 and line 4 is about 10.5 hertz. So an AB quartet is a fairly simple system to analyze. One can extract information essentially about the delta values and the J value 
corresponding to JAB from the spectrum. Now here are some examples of typical AB type of a pattern. This AB pattern corresponds to the two hydrogens which are geminal hydrogen attached to the olefinic carbon. The olefinic gem geminal coupling constant is very small, it is about 2 hertz only. So you can see a small gap between the doublet and doublet here. Nevertheless, if you look at this particular doublet, the two lines are of not equal intensity, so it has a second order effect built in with this. Now let us consider the trans derivative of the bromostyrene, omega bromostyrene. Here also you see a doublet and a doublet corresponding to an AB type of a quartet. With respect to the center of the AB quartet, it is symmetrical on either side of the spectrum and hence this is an AB quartet which can be analyzed like it is shown in true transparency earlier. Here is another example of a thio substituted acrylic acid kind of a derivative where you have a trans coupling between the two hydrogens constitute an AB kind of a coupling. So this corresponds to essentially an AB pattern. One side of the AB is here, the other side of the AB pattern is here, the center is somewhere here with respect to the center again you see a symmetrical pattern on either side of the spectrum. Now this has two types of AB system. The benzylic hydrogens are AB because the chiral center is here. As a result of that these two hydrogens are diastereotopic. The red hydrogen and the blue hydrogen are diastereotopic in nature. And the red hydrogen, one of these hydrogen come at a value of about 3.95 delta or so which is labeled as HP in this particular case and the HA comes around 3.4 or 3.5 ppm or so which is somewhere here. So this is a AB corresponding AB pattern corresponding to the red hydrogen and the blue hydrogen. There are two other hydrogens which are magenta hydrogen and the green hydrogen which are also forming a AB kind of a system except now this AB is further split into a doublet by this hydrogen. So AB, AB quartet is split into a doublet. So you see a AB quartet split into a doublet, totally 8 lines is what you are going to see. Again you have the roof effect kind of a thing, the inner lines are taller than the outer lines on either side of the spectrum. Nevertheless this could be fairly easy to interpret if you recognize this to be an AB pattern. So you have two diastereomeric pairs of hydrogen AB and AB color coded with the different colors in this particular spectrum. Now the delta value for the A red and the AB would correspond to analyzing this doublet and this doublet here. The delta value for the magenta A and the green B, magenta hydrogen and the green hydrogen would correspond to analyzing these lines here and these lines here as an AB quartet which is further split by this hydrogen into a doublet kind of a spectral pattern. The next higher spin system would be ABC. ABX or AMX, these are three spin system, fairly complex systems. Examples of the three spin systems are given here in this uh, slide. You can see here for example, a differentially ortho substituted phenol, this would correspond to an AB system. A allyl chloride epoxide, the epoxide of allyl chloride again constitute as an ABC system of the three membered ring, the hydrogens on the three membered ring for example. In the case of aromatic system again if you consider this derivative which is ortho nitro sorry 2 nitro paraxylene the three hydrogens on the aromatic ring would constitute an ABX kind of a system. A mono substituted olefin can present itself a fairly complex spectrum of a ABX type for example. This is another example of an ABX kind of a spectrum and this is one more example of ABX. Finally, the pyridine derivative can also present itself as an ABX spectrum if the two substituent in the position 2 and 6 are different substituent. The chemical shift value and the coupling constant values can be different for these three types of hydrogen in this molecule. Here is a computer simulated three spin system. The AB part of the spin system is shown separately and the X part of the spin system is also shown separately. Now, these are systems which are typically the olefinic hydrogen, mono substituted olefinic hydrogen where you have a AB and an X kind of a system. The X kind of a system is split into two, one by the JAB, other one, sorry, one by the JAX, the other one by JBX. So one can extract two coupling constant information from the spectrum here. And you can see here the line intensities are not as one would expect for a doublet of a doublet 
if it were to be a simple ax bx kind of a coupling in this particular pattern what one can see of course is the sort of an ab pattern here which is further split into a doublet but the intensities are unusually different in this particular case than what one would expect for a AB, doublet of a AB kind of a spectrum in this particular case. And the frequency values and the corresponding J values are given, which is used for computation of this three spin system in this particular spectrum. Now these are the spectral pattern variation that one would observe as you increase the delta delta from uh, 5 hertz to 18.7 hertz to 56.7 hertz. In other words, the difference between the delta A and the delta B is keeps increasing in this particular keeps increasing in this particular direction, <coughs> and that corresponds to the different kind of spectral pattern one can observe in the case of an ABX kind of a system. Once again, for clarity's sake, the AB part of the spectrum is shown on the left hand side and the right hand side shows the X part of the spectrum. Here is a very unusual ABX, ABC kind of a spectrum or a ABX kind of a spectrum as one can see here. And this is rather difficult to interpret in terms of the line intensities and the number of lines that one sees in the ABX spectrum. This is a truly a second order AB spectrum. ABX spectrum, something looking similar to the class C or the bottom most spectrum of what is shown here is what this corresponds to in terms of the AB portion of the, it's not even X portion is shown here, only AB portion is shown here, which corresponds to a pattern similar to this one. This kind of a pattern recognition is extremely important in order to interpret the spectral data for a second order spectrum. Analysis of the second order spectrum is fairly complex. One can simulate it by systematically varying the delta delta values and the J values until the calculated spectrum essentially matches with the experimental spectrum. Here is another example of a dimethoxybenzaldehyde derivative which presents itself as an AMX spectrum. What is important here is the top spectrum and the bottom spectrum are recorded in two different frequency. The top spectrum is recorded in a 100 megahertz NMR spectrum, a lower frequency and the bottom one is recorded in a higher frequency. We will see the effect of spectrometer frequency in this spectrum very clearly. As you go from a lower spectrometer frequency to a higher spectrometer frequency, the spectrum tends to become a sort of a first order. Here you can very clearly see the X part to be a doublet of a doublet and the AB part which is further split into a doublet. In other words, the four line pattern is further split into doublet of each line for example because of the meta coupling with the meta coupling as well as the ortho coupling with the HM for example and HA for example are shown in this particular spectrum. As I mentioned a mono substituted olefin derivative can present itself a fairly complex spectrum. The methyl acrylate is one such example. The X part of the spectrum is shown here which is labeled as HC and the AB part of the spectrum is labeled here for example which is HA and HB corresponding to the various spectrum. From this one can easily extract certain information. Although delta values cannot be easily extracted, the J values can be relatively easy to extract from the spectrum. The gap between the small lines essentially correspond to the germinal coupling between the two hydrogen. And the center of this particular doublet to the center of this doublet would essentially respond to correspond to the HBC kind of a coupling. In other words, the ortho coupling is what is seen here in this particular case. Now the gap between these two lines, this, that is starting from here, if you call this line 1, line 2, line 3 and line 4, if you take the difference between line 1 and line 3, or line 2 and line 4 that would correspond to the trans coupling which is this HAB kind of a coupling is what is seen here. The center of these lines and the center of these lines if you take and measure the coupling constant that would correspond to the BC kind of a sp splitting pattern that you have here. One can also analyze this side by taking a center of this doublet and center of this doublet one can calculate the HAC, JAC. If you take the center of this doublet and center of this particular doublet here and then measure the gap between these two centers that would correspond to JAB which is the trans kind of a coupling which is the largest coupling in this system. Here again a spectrum of chloroanthranilic acid is what is given. 
Now this particular hydrogen which is adjacent to the chlorine and the COOH comes around 7.8 ppm. This is a 100 megahertz NMR spectrum. Aromatic region alone is shown in the spectrum for example. And the hydrogen that is ortho to the amino functional group would come as the lowest chemical shift value and that has an ortho coupling so it is a doublet whereas the hydrogen which is para to the carboxylic acid functional group has both ortho as well as the meta coupling so that comes as a doublet of a spec doublet. This would also correspond to an AMX spectrum except now between A and X there is no coupling because the para coupling is either very small or negligible not seen in the spectrum. Here is a furan carboxylic acid derivative 60 megahertz NMR spectrum fairly easy spectrum to interpret because it is almost close to a first order spectrum although it represents a HA, HX and HM kind of a system in this particular instance. Each of these hydrogen is split by the hydrogen other two hydrogens into a doublet of a doublet. So the doublet of a doublet for each one of the hydrogen is essentially because of the mutual coupling between the AM and the X spin system and that is fairly easy to interpret in terms of getting the coupling constant value between the various hydrogens in this particular spectrum. Now let us come to the last part of the uh, second order spectrum namely AA prime BB prime or the AA prime XX prime kind of a system which is a four spin system. Examples of AA prime BB prime or XX AA prime XX prime is given in this particular figure. If we consider ethylene disubstituted ethylene compounds because of the fact that uh, the average dihedral angle between the HA and HB and HA and HB prime is not the same geometrically the relationship between HA and HB and HA and HB prime are different so mutually the HA and HA prime HB and HB prime essentially represents uh, magnetically chemically equivalent but magnetically different spin system in terms of A and A prime B and B prime for example an ortho disubstituted derivative where the two substituents are identical constitutes the AA prime BB prime system. A para disubstituted derivative where the two substituents are different also constitutes the AA prime BB prime system. In the case of thiophene, furan and pyrrol for example, the ring hydrogens essentially represent an AA prime BB prime kind of a system. Now the spectral pattern is fairly complex but uh, as mentioned earlier the spectral pattern is highly symmetrical with respect to the midpoint so one should be able to identify the multiplet by the symmetrical pattern that one sees. Pattern recognition is fairly easy for the AA prime BB prime system we will see some examples however extraction of now the here is an example of, values of from the 4 4, four prime really dimethoxy easy. the four benzyl system in other words this is twice the molecule that is shown program. here corresponding to the connectivity over here being the same on the other side also. So it is a benzyl derivative which is a 4, 4 prime dimethoxy benzyl and the ring hydrogen essentially constitute a AA prime XX prime kind of a system. You can see here a doublet, a major doublet for the X and a major doublet for the A kind of a spin system. Essentially the coupling constant is the AX coupling constant which is a large coupling constant that you see here. In addition to that you see a large number of fine lines at the bottom of the spectrum. So this complex pattern essentially constitutes a second order spectrum of A prime B B prime. There are two chemical shift values namely delta A and delta X and several coupling constant value corresponding to J A X, A X prime, uh, A A prime and so on. So it is not easy to calculate the ca extract the information regarding all the coupling constant. The major coupling between A and X can be easily obtained from the spectrum because of the major lines essentially represent the coupling between the A and X in this case. Here is another example of A A prime B B prime spectrum. You can see how complex the spectrum is except to appreciate the symmetrical nature of the spectrum from the center point from the left hand side to the right hand side it is symmetrical. The top spectrum is actually the experimental spectrum. The bottom spectrum is a computer simulated spectrum by putting in the values for the delta values and the J values until the values match the, the spectrum that is calculated matches the exact spectrum that is obtained in the experimental part. The AA prime BBA prime pattern can quite 
drastically change depending on the delta delta value keeping the j values constant and here are the spectral patterns that one would anticipate for the a a prime b b prime pattern as you decrease the delta delta value from 30 hertz to about 5 hertz essentially the delta delta divided by j ratio is cons systematically varied in this particular figure showing the different kind of effect that the spectral pattern has with respect to the delta delta to the j value in the NMR spectrum. Here are two examples of spin system which are essentially A, B, C, D kind of a system. These are fairly complex system but since the spectrometer frequency is high in these cases they can be fairly easily analyzed in these cases. Let, let us see if we can analyze this spectrum. This is metanitrobenzaldehyde the spectrum of metanitrobenzaldehyde. If you look at hydrogen number 5, which is this particular hydrogen, this is flanked by two ortho hydrogen. So one would expect a triplet for this if the two coupling constants are same. And then if there is a para hydrogen which is not coupled, then it would simply be a triplet. In fact, the hydrogen number 5, which is labeled here, is actually seen in more or less like a triplet, except <coughs> that there is a small coupling between the hydrogen para to each other which is not very clearly seen in this case. So only the ortho coupling is seen which is about 7.5 hertz which is a gap between line 1, 2 or 2, 3 can be taken in this. So it is looking like more or less a first order spectrum only. Now if you take hydrogen number 6 which is this hydrogen, this has an ortho coupler which is the ortho hydrogen which is coupled to it with a cu large coupling constant of about 7.5 hertz which is shown here. In addition to that, it also has two meta hydrogens. So the two meta hydrogens, if they couple with this particular hydrogen with identical J values, then it would be a doublet of a triplet. Doublet because of the ortho coupling, triplet because of the two meta hydrogens. So what you see is a doublet of a triplet. In other words, two triplets is what you see. And this is essentially analyzed as a first order spectrum. Now take the example of hydrogen number four, which is in this position. This has an ortho hydrogen and the two meta hydrogens are not equally coupled. In other words, the meta coupling between these two hydrogen is different from the meta coupling between these two hydrogen. So this would be a simple doublet of a doublet of a doublet. Eight line pattern is what one should see. One actually sees the eight line pattern which is shown in this particular spectrum here. Finally, if you look at the hydrogen which is flanked by the aldehyde and the nitro functional group, it has two meta hydrogens, but the coupling constants are not identical. So it would appear as a doublet of a doublet, which is as actually seen as a doublet of a doublet in this particular spectrum. In a similar manner, the orthonitrophenol can spectrum can also be analyzed. This is also a four spin system. Such analysis is helpful in terms of identification of the compounds of the molecular structure. So what we have seen in this particular lecture is the second order effect and the second order effect on a AB type of a spectrum the analysis of the AB kind of a spectrum in terms of extracting the delta values and the J values and the analysis of the AMX, AA prime, BB prime kind of a spectrum. Spectra. Thank you.